G'day and welcome to another episode of My Blue Heaven. Okay, there's a, a bit of a blast from the past. Someone mentioned in the comments from my last video that they missed the introduction song and I haven't played it for such a long time. Um, but there is copyright issues playing that and that's the way it is on YouTube. So apologies. Now, first of all, just a, a big thanks. And I mean a, a huge thanks to everyone um, in regards to well wishes um, with my health. Look, it was just, it was just a really bad cold or flu. Um, and I'm pleased to announce that I've come out the other side a lot stronger. I'm still not quite there. So I'm going to roll with this concept of just my voice and not necessarily my aging and really, really unattractive head. And what you will see in this video will be a number of sort of random uh, slides which will appear um, about this week's weekend's game. This is a preview of our huge round 18 clash against the uh, against Port Adelaide at Marble Stadium. We'll get there shortly. And you'll see lots and lots of slides throughout this um, throughout this bit of a uh, bit of a waffle. I will go on and on and on. That's the way this will be. I'm not quite sure where this will go. This is a, a huge game. It really is a big game on Saturday. And there's so much really to talk about. But I think about these two clubs um, and the history between these two teams goes right back to 1997 when Port Adelaide first came into the competition. And there's no doubt that they've had the wood over us. Not always, but their record speaks for itself. You know, they won a premiership in 2014. They've been in a lot more final series since us, and they've been a lot more successful than us since they did come into the competition. And we have had some great games against them, whether that be in South Australia, or whether that's here at the MCG or at Docklands. Uh, but our recent record against them isn't great. But I suppose part of the theme, guys, of this preview is just waiting and waiting and still waiting on what will be our next big win. And I mean a win of substance. And I've been going on about this for a while now. But a win, but one that we will look back on and think, yeah, that is that is a win. I'm not quite sure whether that this that's going to be on Saturday against Port Adelaide, but I do think about the last time I was genuinely, genuinely up and about as a Carlton fan. And oh, I just remember this game right back to 2013. Last game of the home and away season under Mick Mouldhouse. Yes, Mick Mouldhouse. We played Port Adelaide. They were in their prison bars traditional top at Football Park out, at, uh, out there, which is no longer there. It was the last ever game at that ground. And wow, those two weeks, that, that final game of the year, then the elimination final the following weekend against Tigers were two of the best games I can ever remember being a Carlton supporter. And I've seen, I've seen premierships. I've seen premierships as a fan. I can't ever be, I can't ever remember being more passionate and loud and obnoxious than those two games. And that game at Football Park, where the power led by five goals at half time and then another five goals at three quarter time. And they looked like they were just going to run away with that game. And we just somehow clawed our way back into it. That's, oh, I don't know. There's probably been games of of substance, wins of substance since then. But that one there is just etched, etched with the elimination final in my memory. And I was having a look at that game. We won by a point. We won by a point. Tom Bell 
put us in front in that game in the last quarter. And we had we had some great players. Like Mark Murphy was huge in that game with three goals. And Bryce Gibbs was great in the last quarter. Jared Waite kicked a couple. Eddie Betts kicked some goals out of his arsehole. But the only players that survived from that 2013 game are Ed Kerno. He played in that. He had 19 disposals, Ed, um, in that game and also kicked a goal. And for Port Adelaide, well, Travis Boat played. He kicked a goal and had 22 touches. And Chad Wingard, who is still on an AFL list, he plays for the Hawks. He played in that game. And Tom Jonas, a young Tom Jonas, collected seven, seven disposals. And I reckon he might be back in Port Adelaide's team this weekend, the skipper against us, considering that Trent McKenzie will not play. That's a big out for Port Adelaide. I do. The name that... The name here that is glaring to me, looking out at me on the stat sheet from that game in 2013 is Kane Corns. He had more disposals than anyone else on the ground. He had 35 touches in that game um, and four tackles. And it got me thinking, before I get onto this preview about Kane Corns and his, I suppose his love-hate relationship with our football club, and I love Kane Corns. I think he is fantastic. But it wasn't always the case with me and Kane. Um, when I, just before I first started this channel at the back end of 2018, I had a huge run in with Kane Corns. Um, and I'm quite happy to share that uh, with you now. So, what actually happened throughout 2018, we were going like a busted arsehole under Brendan Bolton. Um, and at that stage, I was working with K-Rock Football, which is a radio um, radio station in Geelong. And I'd been, them, been with them, uh, working with their broadcast of AFL games since 2005. So I've been there for, I finished up there a couple of years ago because of, uh, during COVID. So 16 years, I was working with them, just in a variety of different roles, match day statistician, boundary rider, did a little bit of calling, did some writing for them and also inside football. So I had a, like a bit part sort of player, you know, sort of part-time sort of journo sort of stuff. Nothing huge, nothing huge, but I did have access, okay? I did have access at a media pass and it was a great job. For a long time, I did it. Um, and I was also quite big on Twitter during that period, 2018, I was an angry, very, very angry and very protective of our football club during those, I suppose, those years when Brendan Bolton was coach, but that was going pear-shaped in 2018. It really was. Um, and Kane Corns, who had just started off in the media, had been doing a little bit. He was on SEN with his, uh, I think it was called the Captain's Run show on a Friday, and he was huge on Twitter as well. And by God, didn't he fucking used to give it to us? Um, he give it to us, the Carlton Football Club. And look, we deserved it. But geez, I was an angry, angry bastard and very, very defensive. And whenever Kane would say something, I suppose, negative about our football club, I'd bite back on Twitter. I'd always bite back. Sometimes I'd overstep the mark a little bit. Um, but the good thing about Kane. As much as he gave me the shits, he'd at least he'd at least bite back. You know, a lot of the other journos they just block you, uh, but Kane would always bite back. And on this occasion, he actually mentioned me. It was a Queen's birthday weekend on the Friday on his Captain's Run show on SEN. He had a segment called Mean Tweets, and I tweeted during the week about oh, I can't remember something about Kane, and he mentioned me on mean tweets on his show on SEN and he had a crack at me, really condescending and sarcastic crack. He said, well, this guy Heath, he's a, you know, he works at K-Rock Football, he's a statistician, you know, like, good luck Heath for the future, keep battling away, mate, you might get somewhere, something really along those lines, real smart ass type stuff, which, look, he had, it, look, look, yeah, so I had the shits with that. The following day, guys, I'm working for K-Rock Football at Kidinya Park. Queen's birthday weekend. And it was Geelong versus North Melbourne on a Saturday. And I'm working for K-Rock in the box. And next to me, 
in the box next door was Kane Corns working for AFL Nation or SEN. And he was sitting virtually no more than three or four metres away from me, but he had no idea who I was. He wouldn't know me from a bar of soap other than the shit that I was hanging on him on Twitter and him biting back at me. Anyway, I'll share this tweet. After the game, I actually tweeted out that, and it went sort of half viral, this tweet. I just had a crack at Kane and said, listen, Kane Corns is sitting next to me in the box and he spent the whole day on his laptop, not watching the game, but scrolling through Twitter. Please ignore any of his thoughts on this game. Anyway, it just went, this, this tweet, like it just went through through the roof. People were responding, people were having a crack at me. Kane had a crack at me. Okay, got a little bit nasty, it really did. And I did think then and there that I probably did overstep the mark. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I was actually staying down at Ocean Grove on that Saturday night because it was a long weekend. We have a caravan down there at Ocean Grove and a friend of ours was having their 50th birthday party on the Sunday afternoon down at the caravan park. Anyway, on the Sunday, we're enjoying afternoon drinks in the sun. It was a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And I'm walking in and out of my caravan to the other caravan where they were having this small party to grab a drink every now and then. Anyway, my phone rang. So it would have been around about, oh, I don't know, half past two, three o'clock in the afternoon and my phone rang, but it was a, a number that I didn't recognise. By this stage, I'd had a few, um, but I was feeling pretty good. And I thought, do I answer this? Do I answer this? And I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll answer it. And I answered it and, it's, and hello? Heath Buck? And I said, yes, Heath speaking. It's Kane Corns here. Anyway, it wasn't a prank because I recognised the voice straight away. For the next 45 minutes in a phone conversation, Kane and I went toe to toe. And this is a true story, guys, toe to toe. He rang me, he got my phone number off someone, which I didn't mind, and he just gave it to me. Wanted to know what my problem was. Um, I told him in no uncertain terms that anyone who attacks our football club, I'm going to attack them, blah, blah, blah. I was pissed, um, as in drunk. Uh, and we were shouting. We were shouting. And my wife was actually in the caravan at the time. Now, we came to a decision to leave each other alone. Well, I, was, I said I'd leave him alone um, because I did overstep the mark putting that tweet out. But when we, uh, when we finally got off the phone to each other after about 40 minutes, I went and rejoined the party and my mate said to me, fuck, mate, are you being, were you blowing with your missus in there? And I said, no, mate, I've just been on the phone to Kane Corns for 45 minutes and they didn't believe me. So that is, that is a true story, guys. Okay, Kane Corns. He rang me. He had the decency to get on the blower and have a crack at me. And ever since then, I gave the total respect for Kane Corns. And I actually like I actually like his views on our football club. I really do. Okay, let's get let's get to this game. Let's get to it. Now, Saturday 4:45 or 4:40 start at Docklands. This will be the, I think it's the fifth time we've played the, there this year. Uh, we've only had the one win. That was against North Melbourne, wasn't it? On Good Friday. And we've been beat by St Kilda Brisbane. Another team that beat us there as well. I can't think uh, who that was. But we've lost three times there. And I think I think Port have won. Oh, Western Bulldogs was the other team that we lost to. And the Port Adelaide Football Club, they've been there twice this year and won twice. So their record there is pretty good. In fact, their record this year is sensational. They've only lost the two games. They've been in, been in unbelievable form, really. Um, and you look at you look at this sort of, I don't know, like you look at what they've been able to do since the start of the year 
And the fact that they've only lost two games, one against Collingwood um, at the MCG and the other was in the showdown, really close game um, against Adelaide. And they've just taken everything before them since then. They've been arguably with Collingwood, the best two teams in the competition. We're 11th, they're second. Obviously, a huge win for us this weekend, or just a win will keep us in touch of playing finals football in 2023. Um, we've won our last three, but the opposition has been, let's just say it's been questionable. I know there's a few Carlton supporters up in arms at the moment um, in regards to that, that you know, a lot of supporters are saying the opposition's been poor, blah, blah, blah. Um, and wanting us to give credit to our team. Look, we've played good football. Don't get me wrong. We have played really good football. But all it's all it said to me is this. If this is for real, if this and this are, these are being big wins. All right, these are being big wins. Now, if this is for real, it will stack up against quality opposition. And we get that this week against Port Adelaide. Are they top echelon away from home? You would think they are. You would think they are. So this is this is for us such a such a good opportunity to get a to get a really good read on this current patch of form. And this isn't the same team personnel wise, which were losing games, okay, through that bad patch. And it isn't also the same team that we took in at the start of the year. There has been some changes. Now we get to see whether those changes, all right, the likes of Fogarty, the likes of Cunningham, who've come into this team, all right, and Jack Martin's come into this team and we haven't necessarily had the two rucks in. We now see whether this will stack up against Port Adelaide on Saturday because it will need to. All right, this goes to another level. It really does. And Port Adelaide, look, their form, as they, I mean, when you've won, what are they, 13, 14 in a row and have only lost two games this season, um, their form, their form does stack up, okay? So there's no doubt about that. We look at um, we look at the lineups and it's going to be interesting. And I'm going to, I'll, shall I, I'll start on Port Adelaide because we know Trent McKenzie is out. And what I know or what we know about Port Adelaide, which I think they probably have a, um, an advantage over us is with their, with their ball use, particularly uh, Kane Farrell, Dan Houston, Ryan Burton, who most of them play in the back half, although Houston has spent time in the midfield, Burton spent time forward this year, but they are elite ball users. Trent McKenzie is probably in the top five ball users in the competition, and he is out. He is out, and I think that is significant for them because it will, I think one weakness with Port Adelaide is their defence, and bringing Tom Jonas in, who I think is just about cooked, as a key defender and asking him to match up on a Charlie Curno who... He's, you know, he's been playing consistent football, probably not at the top of his game at the moment. It's a big ask. It's a huge ask, unless you get someone like a Ryan Burton to play on a Charlie Curnow, which will allow uh, Jonas to, to, to potentially play on a, on a Harry. I don't know, but you just look, Lear or Lear's going to have to play on Harry, you would think. All right, so they don't necessarily look like they're stacked with big key Defenders and even Trent McKenzie, McKenzie, okay, you wouldn't call him a beast. All right, so that in itself, all right, could go in our favour. Could go in our favour, particularly if we have any ascendancy out of the midfield. The other one that we'll miss for Port Adelaide this weekend is Junior Rioli. Apparently, he's going on a, to a funeral or something, so he won't be available. They've got a number of options to come back. Francis Evans, I think, potentially Fantasia as a small forward might come into the team. Um, Dersma's played some games at the moment. There's a few others that are knocking on the door, including Scott Lysette. Now, I suppose that's the big one, whether Scott Lysette 
will be uh, passed and ready to play in this game. What happens to Sam Hayes there? Uh, because we know that at his best, Scott Lysette is a pretty decent ruckman. But other than that, there shouldn't be too many more changes for Port Adelaide. They're very, very strong in the midfield. Very strong. And what I like about their midfield compared to ours is probably the speed and the X factor. Okay, so when I talk about X factor, you're talking about Butters and, and Connor Rosen. They almost make things out of nothing. They've got that, they've got that sort of intrinsic sort of nature about them um, that can that can change a game, you know, that can change a game at any point in time, particularly when it's tight. Um, has Butters been in great form over the last couple of weeks? Is he is he just down a little bit at the moment, or do you do to, to get back into the form? Rosie's had a very consistent season. Then they've got their bulls. You know, Ollie Wines, Travis Boak, um, Bergman on his wing is a pretty good player. Um, you know, they can roll Sam Power Pepper. We know what he's able to do through the midfield as well. So they are stacked. And Jason Horn Francis is one of the better developing uh, contested and clearance players in the competition. Um, so they are dangerous through there. They really are. But it's whether, it's whether Scott Lysette can come back in and give them that ascendancy in the ruck, but also at ground level as well. And, I, and, and Willem Drew's the interesting one. Will he, will he potentially go to, to a Patrick Cripps? Okay. And try and expose him for speed on the outside. Not that Drew's got a lot of speed, but they will be able to expose Patrick Cooks if he spends too much time in the midfield. Or will he go to a Sam Walsh, who was sensational last week in the first half, and they put the clamps on him in the second half, Fremantle. Um, yeah, I think they put James Aish on him, who did a reasonable job. Or do they decide to go to Adam Chera? Will it be the first time that Adam Chera has been tagged in his short career? Is it time now that opposition put some effort and attention into Adam Chera? Their forward line is multi-dimensional. It worries me a fraction. It's it's Dixon, obviously. He's only kicked 19 goals for the season, Dixon. Finlayson is, you know, he's he's their leading goal scorer. Very dangerous. Will spend some time in the ruck. Pinch hit. Dixon does the ruck in the front half, a little bit like Tom Hawkins. But the one that worries me probably most is Tom Marshall. Because it's not like we have a, a match-up for them. And then they've got their smalls. They're hard-working smalls. Uh, Jeb McGente, uh, Darcy Byrne-Jones, who's got a new role as that pressure forward. I reckon he might go to Saad. I really do. And Pal Peppers hit the scoreboard this year as well. Very, very hard-working. They, they appear to be a complete football team, forward of centre, with a few question marks in their back half, but their ball use is excellent behind, okay, behind the ball. All right, so that will be interesting. Just looking at us, uh, our team, oh, who knows what will happen uh, this weekend with our team in regards to who comes in for who. We know Matthew Kennedy is going to miss with that uh, MCL or MLC, M Methodist Ladies College is MLC. I think it's MCL. <laughs> MLC is Methodist Ladies College. No, he's got a knee injury. He's going to be out for six weeks. Is it George Hewitt? It's just his replacement. Ugh. You know what? He's here this year. He's got a four-year deal, and he looks as slow as treacle. And I know he's had back concerns and back operations, but he, to me, is a close, close watch. A close watch over the next 12 months. Mm, I am worried about George Hewitt. I don't think he's in great form. Is it just he comes in and we just hope, he just hope, or do we bring Ed Kerno back in? We know it's probably going to happen. Or can we roll the dice and give someone else in the reserves who've been excellent? A Jack Carroll was great against Coburg. Obviously, Jackson Bins has been good. Um, Paddy Dow's ready to come back in after some concussions. 
So, and the other one I think touch and go is Mitch McGovern. That didn't look good, that corky. So, given that they've got Marshall, Finlayson and Dixon, mm, there's question marks, I reckon, on Kemp's ability to, to defend against one of those. So, as Young, who's been, got back into a bit of form, does he come back in? Does he come back in and play as a key defender if McGovern doesn't get up? Possibly. Possibly. I don't know whether Mitch McGovern's got the body to carry a really bad corky. Don't know. And coming off a six-day break, that's going to be a huge... I reckon he'll be named. I reckon he'll be named, but I wouldn't pencil Mitch McGovern in. Or is it Marchback who came back last week? 23 touches in the VFL. Uh, very, very interesting. Big, big task once again to Boyd, Saad, and also Nick Newman and Chincotta. Chincotta's just signed, well, is on the verge of signing a deal at the football club, which would be great for him. I reckon he showed some good signs as to Jordan Boyd. This goes up a notch. This goes up a notch. Chincotta, Boyd, Kemp. This, you've been in now for three weeks together. Okay, tasted wins together. This goes up a notch. You two, Jacob Wiedering, up against Charlie Dixon. He is a colossal. He is a brute. Um, and I reckon all the doubts that we've had on this football team with ball use, with extra pressure, that's that's going to be highlighted in this game. So guys like Blake Akers, Matthew Cottrell, Cripper at times who can turn the ball over by foot. Fogarty, yeah, okay. They're going to be tested in this game. The final one, the final piece of the puzzle is the ruck. The rucks, what are we going to do? I don't think Pitnet's ready to play, but if TDK is, he's just got to play. He doesn't he? He's got to play. So if McGovern's out, that makes it easy, I suppose, that Young goes to centre half back and TD comes, TDK comes in. But if McGovern's all right, what happens, guys? What happens there? Tell me. Who remains? Does Young go out and Silvani stays or does Silvani go out and Young stays? Who gives you more flexibility? Not quite sure in that regards. I am I I want a pivotal win for this football club. And this one mightn't be the pivotal win, but it's going to it's going to help me believe in this group, in this club. If we can Get the job done on Saturday. Um, there's a lot. The last time I wanted to be brave in regards to we're going to win this game was against Saints. And I'm